Hi, my name is Ilma and welcome to my channel. I've been posting Christian blogs for a number of years now and today I'd like to share Psalm 111. And here's God's word. Praise the Lord. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the company of the upright in the congregation. Great are the works of the Lord, studied by all who delight in them. Full of splendor and majesty in his work, and his righteousness endures forever. He has caused his wondrous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and merciful. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the inheritance of the nations. The work of his hands are faithful and just. All his precepts are trustworthy. They are established forever and ever to be performed with faithfulness and uprightness. He sent redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant forever. Holy, holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. All those who practice it have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. Psalm 111, 1 to 10. And here's my blog. Praise and give thanks with your whole heart. Psalms 111, 112, and 119 are the only psalms which are acrostic by phrase in the Bible. That is, each seven to nine syllable phrase begins with each letter of the Hebrew alphabet in order. Many commentators note the connection between Psalms 111 and 112. James Montgomery Boyce observed, and I quote, the two psalms are an obviously matched pair. The first is an acrostic poem about God. The second is an acrostic poem about the godly man, unquote. This psalm is a great invitation to all believers to give praise and thanks to our Lord God with our whole hearts and in unity with other believers. In other words, this is a call to corporate worship among the communion of saints. In verse 2, the psalmist points out a common love for reflecting on the great works done by our Lord. When we recall and meditate on this wonderful acts of God's love, we are actually receiving what He has given us. The remembrance of such powerful acts of God is even provided by God Himself. Without the Holy Spirit bringing to our memory such awesome deeds of God, we will not even be able to glorify Him. This psalm gives worship to the one and only deserving true God. It counts all the blessings that God has given generously to His people. The writer couldn't stop the overflow of joy in his heart as he declares God's holy and awesome name. He ends the psalm with a reminder to revere the Lord and fear Him. When we do, we begin to have knowledge and understanding of God's love and the desire to continually walk in the Spirit. Reflection why is, is corporate worship an integral part in a Christian's life? Well, if, if you remember Genesis 1.27, it says that we are uh, man and woman created in God's image. So, we are love, and He created us in Ephesians. It says that it is through Him, with Him, for him that we are created. In, uh, so when we cannot say that we are a Christian and then we are isolated from everybody else because that is an oxymoron of being a Christian. A Christian is somebody who uh, epitomizes what God, God's image is, who is love. It, in John it says that God is love and also that the Word of God is God Himself. So, 
when we do a corporate worship, when we come together in unison to glorify our Lord God, we are participating in the body. Um, we are members of the body and uh, we cannot be isolated just like how Paul explained that in uh, the many different parts of the body but and uh, many different members of the body but yet one part one body so we cannot live a life of isolation and that's why it's very important a lot of um, because of all this uh, technology that we have now some people think that they can just go and worship God on video on YouTube on uh, and then not be part of the body or the members of Christ. So it is integral in our life because whenever we get together, we are able to bring into the different blessings and the different um, things we need to be thankful for. And then we get to remember we, 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 our own life is a manifestation of God's love for us. So when we share our burdens, when we share our um, difficulties or our joy, right? We are able to um, edify the body of Christ. And in order to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ, we need edification from each other because without that, we are going to be compartmentalized about our relationship with God because uh, in John it also says that how can you say you love me, this is God speaking, whom you don't see and yet you don't love your neighbor whom you see. That's why in Matthew um, he summed up the commandments in two which is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, might and um, the second one is to love your neighbor as yourself. So in other words, it is integral that we are one with the body of Christ when we worship the Lord Jesus Christ. But we, we also need to worship the Lord on our own individual worship. But it's important that we worship as, as a congregation, as a community, as a communion of saints, because that will bring much, much more glory our Lord Jesus Christ if we put all together all and we talk about all the things that God has done in our lives then that brings God much pleasure thanks for watching I hope you check my website at ilmaarts.com for artworks photographs and a copy of this blog and I hope you subscribe to my channel on YouTube so I could make more videos for the Lord thanks for watching again and God bless and um, stay being thankful and praising God.